Hey guys, it's your girl Samantha with Black Nation News, and I wanted to cover this story that I've seen coming out of Florida. Just, whoo, like it's a lot to take in, and y'all already know what I'm about to say, but I feel like this is a bit of karma because America treats black people like crap. And you may say, what does that have to do with black people? We all know how Florida gets down. First, they had to stand your ground law, and they let George Zimmerman's dumbass float off into the sunset after murdering a child, Trayvon Martin. And George Zimmer went on to have a million different arrests after that murder, and he's still free. Um, and he's just, a, he's just a nightmare. He does things to continue to hurt the black community. And yeah, so then we have <clears throat> just recently Governor DeSantis. Why do I even know who the governor is of Florida? Because He's a full-on racist, and he just signed a bill into law to make it harder to vote. So we can look at that really quickly, just so we can get some details on that, because you guys know how I feel about the voting that all Americans should get to have. And he's one of those racist-ass governors that's trying to suppress the vote. So that's another fight that black people have to um, go after. We're always fighting for every little thing we try to do. It's so funny watching these people do stuff when they have like criminal, you know, investigations pending and <clears throat> things of that nature. So it's like they're always just they're to me they're thugs. Like Trump was a, a, to me looked like the mafia or a mobster or something the way he used to act, and everybody around him seemed to go right along with that. All these races are thugs, and it's just so funny watching them do things. Uh, <laughs> I'm just laughing at this right here. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, you're safeguarding the sanctity of Florida elections. So, and of course, it's flgov.com. Child by. Let's listen. To, let, I'm going to read from more of a liberal uh, media, quote unquote, liberal media that will give me the real, give us a real scoop on what exactly went down instead of something that's going to try to whitewash it and make it seem adorable whatever he did but yeah these people these politicians i mean they usually always have some cases against them like that matt gates and look how much trump trouble trouble trump is in right now and they're just sitting here creating law and it just it's just more hypocrisy it's whole more hypocrisy of america it's like how do you have how are you committing all these crimes and you have all these cases pending but you're able to write create still write things into law like you still have that kind of power and then yet you have black people who just got who got out of prison who already did their time and they can't even do something as fucking minor as voting and not to say voting is not important but just the act of voting that's all they're trying to do is and reinstate that right as an american citizen and they don't even have that right when they've already done their time and these people are committing blatant crimes we all know their crimes and we see them and we know that they're probably not going to do any kind of time or any kind of punishment for their crimes and that's racist america and that's just america is being racist as usual so florida governor ron DeSantis signs restrictive voting bill florida republican governor ron DeSantis on thursday morning signed into a law a controversial voting bill aimed at curbing access to mail-in voting in the state, joining a host of other GOP-led states pushing newer new limits in connection with former President Donald Trump's baseless claims of fraud in the 2020 election. In signing the bill during an appearance on Fox & Friends, the Florida Republican highlighted provisions of the bill, including stricter voter ID requirements for voting by mail, creating limits on who can pick up and return a voter's ballot, uh, who, are they to tell, who are they to set those limits? Chow bye up and return a voter's ballot and banning private funding for elections. Me signing this bill says, Florida, your vote counts. Your vote is going to be cast with integrity and transparency, and this is a great place for democracy. Yeah, okay. It's like the back, most backwards part of democracy. You're making it harder for people to vote. How is that a great place for democracy? It's saying to others, it's saying to white people, your vote counts. It's saying to everybody else, it doesn't count. We're going to make it harder for you to cast your vote. Um, so local media outlets told CNN that they were not allowed to go inside the morning signing event 
and that it was a Fox News exclusive. I wonder why? Because Fox is the white supremacist network of choice, even though they're all white supremacist networks. But Fox really is just, you know, up front with their racism. So some of the restrictions created by the bill, Senate Bill 90, also include expanding partisan observation power during ballot tabulation and creating additional restrictions for Dropbox use. The new Florida voting law faces immediate legal challenges. I love it. A coalition that includes the League of Women Voters of Florida and the Black Voters Matter Fund announced it had filed a lawsuit within minutes of DeSantis signing the law. It challenges several provisions, including its new restrictions on ballot drop boxes and the prohibition on organizations and volunteers returning ballots on behalf of voters. A separate lawsuit filed Thursday morning by Common Cause, Florida branches of the NAACP and a disabilities rights group describes a new law as the latest in a long line of voter suppression laws targeting Florida's black voters, Latino voters, and voters with disabilities. Last week, after days of contentious debate and last-minute amendments bouncing between chambers, the Florida Republican-controlled State House and Senate came to an agreement and approved SB 90 along party-line votes on the eve of the state's final day of the legislative session. The bill is part of a Republican-led effort nationwide to restrict voting access. So it's like, we know this. This fucking crime. But it still gets to happen. This makes me sick. Just makes me sick. So the bill is a part of a Republican-led effort nationwide to restrict voting access at the state level in the wake of rec- record turnout in last November's elections. It's basically white fragility. They're freaking the fuck out because we turn states blue not even purple, straight up from red to blue. And they're losing their shit over it, and they're flipping out. And I, last I heard, it was like at least 300 bills on desk trying to get passed, trying to go through uh, to suppress the vote, to make it harder to vote, to restrict voting. They can call it whatever they want to, but you shouldn't be making it more difficult for American citizens to vote and still try to call yourself a democracy. It's hypocrisy, it's a clown show, it's a lie. So, a tally by the left-leaning Brennan Center for Justice at New York University found that 361 bills, 361 bills, I didn't even know the exact number, that's ridiculous, it's closer to 400 than 300, with provisions that restrict voting have been introduced in 47 states as of March 24th. That's disgusting. That's absolutely disgusting. 47 states, seriously? So that means even the Democrat-led states are also restricting voting rights, like making it harder for people to vote. These people must not want to be in the White House ever again, these Democrats. In the past month, the effort to restrict voting has intensified as state legislatures began to head into the final months of their respective sessions. Democrats frequently mentioned the continued public fallout from Georgia's recent election overhaul bill during debate on the Florida measure which they called a revival of Jim Crow in this state. Yeah, well Jim Crow is this whole country. It's a revive been a it's probably never left Jim Crow to be honest. We just see more of the Jim Crow antics because we have smartphones now and the internet to post our own videos and not wait for the white media to cover things. So the that bill that was passed in the state just north of us sent us a message and the response to that bill should let us know we should not be doing this. Democratic state representative Michael Greco said during House debate, pleading, please do not Georgia my Florida. Wait, what? Oh, okay. (laughs) Okay, okay. They're also racist. I don't even, I'm getting the states confused. Florida Republicans who have repeatedly acknowledged that their state ran a successful and secure 2020 election said the bill will provide guardrails to prevent anyone from gaming the system in the future. So if they ran a secure 2020 election why are you needing to restrict voting more voting access more it doesn't make any sense (sighs) these people just they run in circles trying to find a way to keep black people down because they're so they know they're not superior at all that they don't even make sense at this point like he's contradicting himself it's like there was either fraud or there wasn't and if there wasn't fraud then what's the point of adding more laws to restrict voting access for for American citizens. How does that make any sense? (sighs) 
make it make sense. Let's vote his ass out of office next. So we've had voter ID. It works. It's the right thing to do. DeSantis said on Fox News last week, adding that the state's 2020 election was fair and transparent, and the reforms we have coming will make it even better. No, just leave it alone. You're going to make it even more racist, and that's basically going to break the system even more down. Break it down even more, this whole system that we have in America. That racism is just woven right on in. So DeSantis' signature comes as former President Trump continues to cement his hold on the Republican Party. (laughs) On Monday, Wyoming Representative Liz Cheney, the number three House Republican, publicly rejected Trump's most recent false charge that he would have won the 2020 election if not for fraudulent votes. Her latest rebuke of the former president that has put her at odds with many members of her own party. Oh, well. The 2020 presidential election was not stolen, Cheney tweeted on Monday. Anyone who claims it was was is spreading the big lie, turning their back on the rule of law, and poisoning our democratic system. Cheney is now facing backlash from our fellow Republicans and is suspected to be removed from her leadership position. She was already removed. Um, yeah, that was May 6th, so that's a little bit ancient. So, why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because I feel like it's karma. So, he signed this bill making it harder for people to vote and their buildings are literally crumbling down seems like governor DeSantis has a little bit more on his plate that he should be dealing with instead of worrying about voting restricting rights and voting suppression voter suppressing laws when you have literally buildings collapsing and killing your florida citizens like people in your in your state so if you weren't so busy trying to be racist and trying, you know, trying to do, trying to hold black people down and keep your boot on our neck, then your people might still be alive. You should be writing more laws to regulate the building codes and the infrastructure and the the just the rules that go around that once that building's been been up and to keep continuing to inspect it like every so many years just to make sure it is a sound building a sound foundation that is not going to crumble like a bomb was underneath it like what the hell you have a lot more to worry about than voting if you say the voting was secure then why is this first why is this getting done first before you worry about your buildings that are collapsing all over the place and your stand your ground law which is is a load of crap so they just I hate, I, you know, they make me hate Florida and the fact that buildings are collapsing. I remember like wanting to have a condo in Miami when I was younger, probably like my twenties. I always thought like I was going to have a condo in Miami, a loft in DC, you know, just in a, in an apartment in Paris. That was my, my dream of living the, the jet set life, the luxury, life of luxury, but now, you can miss me with that. I would rather have a nice house in Africa um, for vacationing. And, you know, I have a few properties in America, but they're not, they're not necessarily at a beach, for one, because I just, I just don't feel like you can really build a sound building on a beach. I mean, you're basically building your house on quicksand, on sediment. So... You know, the, the ideal of a beach house is wonderful in theory, but in reality, it's not, it's just not a stable thing that you, sh- you should be doing. So let's go back here and go back to what I was originally coming here to talk about. So Miami building collapse, possible causes explained by area expert. Miami sauntered coastal air could have facilitated the erosion of steel, expert said. Okay, so it says a condominium collapsed in Surfside, Florida on Thursday morning has left many wondering what caused a massive implosion, which has so far killed one person and left 99 people unaccounted for. Remember, guys, this is five days ago. Miami-Dade County authorities are currently conducting an investigation into the Champlain Towers South condo collapse, though an official cause behind the devastation has yet to be determined. An area expert has brought forward some ideas as to what could have led the building's facade to crumble to the ground. Gary Slosberg, 
Yeah, I love these all these Jewish names. Founder of the South Florida Construction Company National Home Building and Remodeling Corps said he hasn't heard any specific leads as to the cause of the building's fall. But after decades working in the industry, he has his suspicions. In a general way, there are many things that could happen, construction defects or engineering defects, he said, adding that he's not suggesting there were any construction or engineering defects, but simply pointing out the possibility. I think there is some value, and it makes some sense to do periodic inspections. <sighs> you guys. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Like, like duh. Yeah, you're telling us something new. You're, you're the industry expert? Yikes. No wonder the building's collapsed. Of course you're supposed to be doing periodic inspections, like every year, probably annually. If you're living in Florida with all that, that salt and hurricanes. And and let me tell you guys, I'm not even a freaking anything expert when it comes to buildings. And I know concrete is a very flimsy material. Every time I turn around, it is crumbling and flumbling about. You know, you can have weeds just growing up inside the concrete. It, it deteriorates over time. So you have these huge concrete buildings. And it should tell you something. Like maybe it's time to start building a, with different materials. Something that's more sustainable for the, you know, for the planet. And just, <clears throat> just end, something that's a little bit more indestructible than concrete. But see, this makes me look at a lot of things because even with the container home I was thinking about building for myself is, you know, the steel. I never really thought about the rust being eaten away. And so that's quite problematic as well. So it's like what what materials can be used that would be more sustainable than concrete? So that would that would definitely be some worth looking into. So engineering inspections, which happen every five or ten years, for example, might include removing drywall or other material to expose and inspect steel beams to make sure they are not eroding away. I think five or ten years is too long. Like every every other year, at least. Because you could, you know, it's so easy to miss something. It's a huge-ass building. It's like, like he's saying, like you got to go on walls and stuff. I think they said one one resident saw the was complaining or told her husband she saw the the pool was leaking like right before the building collapsed. So it's just it's it's a lot. It's a, this is a lot. He added that salt in Miami's coastal air could potentially facilitate the erosion of steel. Um, evidence or erosion can appear in rust stains or exposed rebar. It's like a cancer. Salzburg said, by the time you see it, it could be too late. He added, however, that while salt can have a severe impact on coastal buildings, he is not sure how long it would take for salt to erode a building's materials to the point of collapse. Well, I thought you were the industry expert. And they just spelled his name wrong. Salzburg. Uh, I'm supposed to be Slossburg. Which is a crazy name. But anyways, also suggests that if the building were constructed with a post-tension slab, or a concrete slab that has cables running through it, and one of those cables came loose, that could have led to its destruction. See, these people, they, they, this is why they, they can't stand black folks. We built pyramids, like, how long ago? And they're still standing? But you got these people with 40-year-old buildings that just, they, they have yet to come up with a way to keep buildings from crumbling to the ground after a short period of time compared to how long things our ancestors built have lasted and i can't tell you how many times i've seen white people trying to figure out how we built those pyramids because they're so big and they're still standing maybe you should take some notes instead of always trying to act like you're better than somebody when we know you're not you can't even stand in the sun for longer than 10 minutes without some boils on your back like how are you how are you the superior race it's ludicrous how are you the superior race when you're the last race that was created that you were created. Black people were the original. We are the original people of this planet. We are the original people of Earth. And we were here for billions of years. If not longer. Before any other race was even a thought. So for white people to come be the youngest race too. 
the last one that was created and come out of no out the wood where somehow we're the superior right bullshit it's basically a mind game you basically had to say that because you were starving in the caucus mountains and you you, you vowed with your with your people you would never go through that harsh time again and so you went to work with your demonic asses lying and pillaging and murdering and warring and raping and killing for centuries so you would never return to that place again of being that hungry and eating each other it's kind of like um you know if you were impoverished and you got a taste of success like you were impoverished for years and you finally got a taste of success you wouldn't let that go easily you would not want to let that go and then especially if you see a race you discover there's a race on another continent that can wipe you out I don't even think they had to discover it from another country. I'm pretty sure we were in Europe as well. Because we're the original race. We were all over the place. We were everywhere first. We were already everywhere. Period. So, if you saw us mingle with the white race, and then the white race disappeared when the baby came out, you would probably like, games up, you know. But yeah, if you felt like you saw that the child looked more black, than white for mixing with because imagine like back in the days in those times very ancient far back times where they no, first noticed this stuff for one they weren't very educated I don't think on biology and genetics and all that and then for two black people were not mixed like we are now we were pure black people pure just black and so if you mixed with a pure white person you're so black like you're it will wipe that white person they're all their passive recessive dna out and can you imagine how that would terrify a race that's like not really sure what's going on they just know that a black person most likely a black man has sex with a white person most likely a white woman and you had a child and the child looks like a black another black person so basically every time you have kids like like you're basically wiping out the white lineage like the white line is disappearing because of their recessive weak genes and that again shows how none how inferior they are how are you superior when you have the weaker genes you have recessive genes we have the dominant it, it, this shit is it's just ridiculous and i mean this stuff like this with this building collapsing it screams mediocrity it screams basic bottom shelf. It screams inferiority. And I'm calling it like I see it. I don't care. You know, they're out there. They've been lying forever. Finally, black people have a voice to say, um, time's up. <laughs> you know, this is what's going on and this is what it really is. And it's time to tell it like it is. We love it keep it real with our people let's keep it real with their people mediocre as fuck like i try to tell people like they're not nowhere near as smart as they try to convince you that they are this is this is to me you've been building in this country for how long and you can't build a building that will will stand the test of time there's buildings everywhere else that's been up for centuries. Even in Europe and like other places. Like, do better, America. And another thing this comes from is just greed. Greedy. Like, they're always trying to find the cheapest way to do things. Trying to cut corners. They are probably trying to cut corners when they didn't inspect this building. Because they didn't want to pay the cost that it would take to fix this damn building. What did they think was going on? I, I know for a fact somebody knew what was going to happen. I feel sorry for the residents who just sitting up in their little condos having no clue that they were living on a, in a time bomb. I'm, I'm just, to me, I'm just shocked that you could live somewhere, you're the owner on top of that. And you don't demand somebody fix that damn building. 
or else. I mean, they want to put lawsuits against the silliest shit. But nobody was anybody suing the city for not in, fixing these problems that they said they knew were happening for years prior to this happening? You know how many lawsuits I've seen brought to court because people, white racist people were mad because at the SBA, Small Business Association, is prioritizing um, African Americans and other minorities, which includes their own race of people. It includes like women, veterans, like all these people that, that includes white people. And they're like, oh, it's racist, it's, it's unconstitutional, it's discriminatory. No, it's trying to right all the discrimination that's been going on for centuries in this country. That's what it's trying to make the, the playing field more fair, more equitable. You nim nut. So let me finish reading this because I don't want to go too long. Um, she'd already gone long enough. What is it, 42 minutes in? So, okay, so it, it could take down a whole building, he said. So he's talking about the, the post tension slab or concrete slab that has cables running through it. And one of those cables, just one cable come loose and the whole thing and then fell down. Mediocrity. Do better. Salzburg noted that the condominium, which had two bedroom units on the market, asking between 600000 and 700000 was built in 1981 when the county had different construction codes. So if you know that and the construction codes change... All your ancient buildings that did not adhere to those those new upgraded standards should be updated. I mean, this is part of Biden's, you know, him talking about this infrastructure bill that's very muchly needed across the country. You know, it's just this country's crumbling. Um, so with every hurricane, new construction codes come out. New engineering codes, he said. This is 40 years later since the building was constructed. Oh, please. How many hurricanes did they have since then? That's, that's, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The codes have changed at least a dozen times. Well, how many times has this building been inspected in the last 40 years? Probably not even 12 times. I know they have. So some of these older buildings are not really built to withstand the type of same weather conditions as when they were built originally. Well... It's not even about that. The buildings are just old. So they have an expiration date. They're going to weather with the storms and they're going to deteriorate over time. So it's not even about the weather was different back then. No, it's, it's, they were just, this shit was going to crumble regardless. So you need to be, you know, constantly fixing it if that's the type of material you want to use. So another possibility, he said, is that the bal building's balconies may have had some constructional issues. I've seen so many balconies lately collapsing. Many Miami-area buildings, he said, are built with concrete balcony balconies that are backpitched, meaning they don't allow water to escape properly after it rains. Oh, Lord. <sighs> Ooh, wee. Uh, so in 1980, we didn't know how to build a balcony. In a hurricane area, hurricane heavy beach town area, you don't know how to make it so that the rain will escape properly from a balcony. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this. It really doesn't. It doesn't. It, it seriously does not. <laughs> Some, I think my two year old would know how to get this right. There's a lot of concrete restoration going on, and this is where you see a lot of that rust and rebar coming through the slab between the water sitting there and the salt air. It's just not a good combination. Yeah, in that area, I mean, you gotta... It's gotta be something else to use besides concrete. A lot of salt in autumn hurricanes, I mean... I don't know. Maybe it just shouldn't be built, built on. Or maybe it should be built in a different, more inland... Uh, but again, I don't know. So basically, like to me, that means this land is not buildable. But you're going to build there anyway because you want to make a profit. And people are greedy and they want what they want. They want ocean views or whatever. And now we see where that got them. Uh, but again, I don't know if that would take down the whole building. We just don't know what happened. Mm, yeah, pretty sure you don't because you guys are stupid. Slotsworth said a number of different factors may have led to the condominium's fall. 
Structures in Miami-Dade County that have existed for 40 years or more must undergo a 40-year safety recertification inspection. <laughs> they should cut that in half. Not no 40 years, maybe t every 10 years. Following the deadly partial collapse, State Senate Annette Tadio, Tadio called for changes to building inspection rules. Buildings need to be inspected much sooner than 40 years, especially in a county where sea level rise can affect a foundation, she tweeted Thursday. <sighs> All right, so let's let's look at the more recent articles, and then I'll wrap this video up. So we have so now you know it's five days later. We've got at least eleven dead after partial building collapse near Miami. See, so I won't go. Not only because Florida is racist, but I just won't go anywhere near Florida. Just because it's just, it's so riddled with problems. Like weather systems and, the it's like an island. Like Lisa Cabrera said, it's, it's, it's just out there. It's a peninsula, it's water on all sides. It's sand, it's, it's just like the most unstable environment to be building stuff on. So, at least 11 people are dead and 150 people are unaccounted for after a residential building partially collapsed in Surfside, Florida, Thursday. Search and rescue teams continue to race to find the missing. Emergency officials are also asking people to call 305-614-1819 if they have relatives who are unaccounted for. The cause of the collapse is still unknown, but new details are emerging about the integrity of the structure noted in an engineering report in 2018. Here's the latest on the Florida condo collapse from CNN's Holly Yen and Holly Silverman. Yeah, we have the same name. While families endure a fifth day of anguish waiting of anguish waiting to learn. Okay, come on, CNN. Let's edit your, edit your stuff. The fate of 150 loved ones and sobering reality is setting in. We know time is of the essence. Maggie Castro of Miami Day Fire Rescue said Monday. They have a lot of little Cubans there. Castro? Okay. We're still in a rescue mode, but as you can imagine, we're starting to understand that it's going to be less likely that we're going to be finding survivors. Well, yeah, you're five days in, so. No survivors have been found in more than a day in Surfside, Florida, where 55 condo units of Champlain Tower South crashed to the ground. That was like, I want to say over half the building. I think there was 100 units on Thursday. So that's, you know, 55 over half the building. I would say maybe two people per that's at least 100 people that's dead. Well, like they said, it's 150 missing. Because it's, it's probably a retirement area or just young single people. And if they have a kid, child, it's one kid living in a condo in this, you know, wealthy area. So here's the latest. The search. The death toll rose to 11 after searchers found two victims Monday. Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Levine Cava said the number of missing people decreased to 150 and the number of people who have been accounted for increased to 136 the mayor said are there any black people that live in, in miami everybody's on there they're white jewish which is white well they could be other races too or cuban or hispanic or something latino so florida state fire marshal jimmy petronas said rescue workers are working day and night to find survivors more than 400 rescue workers are assigned <laughs> More than 400 rescue workers are assigned to the search with about 200 scouring the wreckage at any given time. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Chief Alan Kaminsky said the search has been treacherous as rescuers have been stimmied by fire and the constant threat of further collapse. 2018 report raises alarm. A 2018 report by the structural engineering firm Morubito Consultants detailed significant cracks and breaks in the concrete. The firm said in a statement Saturday the report didn't say whether the structure was at risk of collapse, but the group said it provided an estimate to the condo association to make the extensive and necessary repairs. The association retained Morbito again in June 2020 for the building's 40-year repair and restoration process, according to the statement. The firm said it exclusively provides engineering consulting services and does not provide construction-related services. What's the difference? Can we get someone who has expertise in both, or can they, like, combine themselves together into one company at least? So we, it's just, it's kicking the can, trying to throw it off on someone else's shoulders. We are deeply troubled by this building collapse and are working closely with the investigating authorities to understand why the structure failed, Marbita Casano said. Residents raised concerns. Eliana Salhauer, Salzhauer, who is most likely Jewish, 
One of three town commissioners for Surfside, Florida, told CNN Sunday night that survivors of the collapse she encountered have said they felt shaking during construction on a nearby building in recent years. South Howard said some of the survivors told, told her they were bothered by the shaking of their building that occurred while a high-rise was being constructed next door. They told her there was shaking, cracking, and water leaking in the garage, she said. So, we feel this shaking, but we're just going to keep on living there. I don't know. Anyways, I don't know. Ooh, it's just it's just a lot. It's a lot. So, America's, America's falling down like the London Bridge. And this is just the, the beginning of many things to come because it's just... Yeah, the, the American dollar, the American economy, the American job sector, the American education system. Collapse, collapse, collapse. All of it, we're just going to be launching a class before our eyeball. So get yourself some land, grow your own food, teach your own kids, and Godspeed. You know, build your own house. And by gosh, please inspect it more than once every 40 years. All right, guys. So, can I see you again? Take care of yourselves and each other. I am out. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Peace.